Now the troops are ready to start. 47 formations on the ground and 12 echelons in the air. They will start passing Tiananmen Square in a while. And the 20 helicopters are forming the number 70 to commemorate the 70th anniversary of the People's Republic of China. Now we see the PLA Guard of Honor, the People's Liberation Army under the leadership of the Communist Party of China, safeguards national interests for the country and well-being for the people. The ground force traces its origins to 1927. Is the largest and oldest branch of the armed forces, serving as the military wing of the PLA. It's been charged with the strategic requirement of mobile operations and multi-dimensional offense and defense. That means raising its capabilities for precise, multi-dimensional, sustainable operations. See the PLA Navy leading the team of Rear Admiral Zhou Mingui and Liang Xu. Its original mission was to protect territorial waters and support island combat. Over the years, the Navy has expanded its mission to include comprehensive combat at sea, strategic deterrence and counterattack safeguarding the sovereign rights and interests at sea and protecting strategic passageways. Coming up is the Air Force led by Major Generals Jing Tao and Zhao Yongyuan. It comprises aviation, ground air defense, radar, airborne, and electronic countermeasures arms units. This year, the Air Force turns 70. Its mission is to become a modern and strategic force that integrates aviation and space power with enhanced strike and defense capabilities. This is the POA rocket force leading the team of Major Generals Xue Jinfeng and Zhang Fengzhong. The purpose of the rocket force is to strengthen strategic deterrence capabilities, primarily nuclear deterrence through precision strikes with dual-use nuclear and conventional missiles. The Strategic Missile Brigade is one of the Army's pillar combat forces. Coming up is the Strategic Support Force, led by Major Generals Wang Xuewu and Kang Baihai. Strategic support is making its first appearance in the National Day Parade. It's a new type of combat force established to maintain national security. The Joint Logistic Support Force. This is also their National Day Parade debut. They're led by Major Generals Liu Xiangdong and Ren Yanbin. Logistic support is crucial as modern warfare requires tremendous supplies of energy and resources. Next up, the PLA Armed Force, led by Major Generals Zhao Dongfang and Zhang Weiguo. The armed police work in safeguarding national security and public well-being as a support to the party and the people. They perform multiple functions in maintaining social stability. And here are the female soldiers led by Major Generals Cheng Xiaojian and Tang Bing. There were 352 soldiers from different service organizations, armed police and troops. Chinese women can be seen on the front line of fighting disasters, guard points, in every aspect of the armed forces. Now comes the researchers' division, led by Major Generals Yi Shutian and Wen Fuxin. They come from military institutes, the National University of Defense Technology, PLA Academy of Military Science, and PLA National Defense University. The division cultivates military talents in its mission to advance the strategy of strengthening the army through science and technology.
This was the militia division led by Zhao Bingqing and Liao Weiwei. The militia comprises female soldiers from different fields in Beijing. They are a very vital complementary force to the army, receiving regular training to maintain their combat capabilities. Coming up is the formation representing China's UN peacekeepers. They are led by Major Generals Xu Youzhe and Ma Baochuan. China contributes the most troops among the five permanent members of the UN Security Council. There are over 2,500 Chinese serving in seven mission fields, with 8,000 on reserve duty. Nine, 13 Chinese peacekeepers have died in foreign lands. The sounds of heavy vehicles tell us the arms and equipment formations are coming. 40% of the armaments will be shown to the public for the first time. We will see 32 formations. This is the Airborne Fighting Vehicle Formation, led by Major Generals Chu Huolin and Chen Tao. The vehicle can be airdropped to the front lines. It is used in a joint combat system. Up next, the self-propelled gun formation, led by Major Generals Zhang Jianfeng and He Jihang. The artillery can provide long-range suppressing fire, precision strike, and information-based combat. Also in the formation are the Type 155 vehicle carried gun howitzers, a new suppressing fire system that gives stronger fire and higher precision and mobility. Here comes the anti-tank missile formation, led by Major General Zhou Meiyu and Li Zhenlin. The HJ-10 missile system allows precision attack and ground targets not visible to the naked eye. It is also used against low-altitude or low-speed flying targets. To date, the BOA has developed an anti-tank equipment system that features diversified launching types, ranges, and guidance systems. Combat vehicles can be used in, on all terrains, and the auto dryer aircraft are used in complex battle environments. The equipment system can achieve fast delivery of weapons and forces, crucial in surprise attacks. The Armed Police Anti-Terrorism Formation led by Major General Liu Xinli and Wang Zaifa. The assault vehicles and explosion-proof armored vehicles are highly mobile and versatile. Coming up is the Naval Battle Group. Major Generals Wang Xianfeng and Wu Yuhong are leading the shore-to-ship missile formation. The YJ-12B missiles hit large and medium-sized ships. They are used for coastal defense. Behind them is the formation of ship-to-ship -ship and submarine-to-ship missiles. Maria Neurologia. The YJ-18 and YJ-18A missiles are developed for power and accuracy. And they are a new generation of anti-ship cruise missiles. Phalanx 
Clausen weapon system. They form a complete defense system that can intercept enemy missiles and support naval and land battle groups. We are seeing the HQ-9Bs and HQ-22s. They are capable of intercepting multiple airstrike weapons in a complex electromagnetic environment. HQ-12A missiles and HQ-6 launchers on display. And combined, they can defend against incoming targets from various ranges and altitudes. Next is the Field Operation Air Defense Missile Formation, led by Major Generals Zhang Fan and Pei Xiaochang. We can see HQ-17As and HQ-16Bs. They can be rapidly mobilized to intercept targets. The information battle group consists of four formations. First is led by Major General Xu Guiming and Meng Fan Hao. The equipment is designed to capture information quickly. It is able to perform tasks independently and support other troops. First formation led by Major Generals Zhang Peng and Wu Qingyou has a variety of high altitude drones designed for reconnaissance duties. targeted attacks, they can also jam enemy air defense warning systems. Third formation, led by Major Generals Li Guangquan and Xu Beifu, is known for its versatile drones. Some are aerial drones, others dive deep into the sea to collect information and perform special tasks. comes the CJ-100 cruise missile formation led by Major Generals Fang Zhuxian and Li Jiaxin. The CJ-100 is the latest in CJ series. 
and this is the first appearance in the National Day Military Parade. The hypersonic weapon features high precision and long-range strike capability as well as fast response. More missiles. This time, the DF-26, compatible with both nuclear and conventional warheads. Leading the formation are Major Generals Zhang Jitun and Liu Hongjiang. The DF-26's advantages are strong mobility and flexibility in one location. Precision strikes on ground and underground targets, as well as those at sea, make it a strong deterrent. Now comes the JL-2 long-range ballistic missile formation led by Rear Admirals Wu Dongzhu and Liu Wenpao. The second-generation JL-2 can be launched from nuclear submarines, providing sea-based nuclear deterrence. DF-31A is China's second-generation solid-fuel intercontinental strategic nuclear missile. It features high mobility and adaptability and allows rapid deployment and precision strikes. DF-5B nuclear missile formation. Led by Major Generals Wang Xiaochu and Deng Rongzhen, the system can carry multiple warheads and excels at both assault and defense. DF-41 is an intercontinental strategic nuclear missile. Its purpose is for both balancing power and securing victory. It has a pivotal role in China's strategic nuclear strengths. China's missiles include ballistic missiles and cruise missiles, as well as conventional warheads and nuclear warheads. They are deployed in mountains and the ocean in defense of national security and world peace. The system includes warning, reconnaissance, long-range strike, strategic delivery, reinforcement, and support. Taking the commanding position is KJ-2000 warning plane with Air Force Commander General Bing Laihan in charge. It's flanked by eight J-10 fighter jets. The area rainbow represents the seven decades that the People's Republic has gone through. This is due to its long-range capability, tremendous carrying capacity, and fast speed. The plane can operate under complex weather conditions. Sustainment support plane system as well. The two VEX formation includes Y9s and communication and psychological warfare, as well as medical aid. There are also YAs used for long distance support, digital engagement, and digital reconnaissance. They boost the Air Force's joint operation capacity. Here comes the refueler and receiver echelon. It consists of HY-6 refueling planes and J-10B fighter jets. The flying oil tanker enables fighter jets to operate for longer distances. Next are the J-15 fighter jets can operate on the deck of aircraft carriers. They made their debut in the 2015 military parade.
Here comes more fighter jets flying past our 5J-20s, 5J-16s, and 5J-10Cs. China's first fighter jet completed its maiden flight in 1956. And the J-20 is China's fourth generation of supersonic stealth fighters. The last, but not the least, the trainer aircraft Ashlong includes five JL-10s and 17 planes of two other types. The JL-10 can conduct air combat missions. There are also outstanding individuals who have made great contributions to the country's development. Some of them joined the revolution before the founding of the People's Republic. We also see representatives of veterans, members of the paramilitary, and civilians who were active in military campaigns. In the formation fierce battles, the three medals represent the founding of the army, independence, and freedom, and liberation. They signify the party's role in uniting the people and leading them through 28 years of fierce battles against foreign aggression and the fight against oppression and to achieve liberation. It's supposed to represent a nation on the rise. 